that having done that, whoops, let me just get back to the image control. Okay, so let's test that by previewing. If I go on a preview, all right, you notice that we're not seeing the image here, but we're seeing it here. This is a good thing. So how about now let's actually make the image itself come up. I'll go back to this image control and I go to the image property and here's what I do. I'm going to look up the SharePoint data connection, cat image register. So I'm going to look up my cat image register and I want to find cat images where the title field of cat image register is equal to this item dot title. And then I only want to return the property called cat image from the cat image register. Now, if I click this and if we wait a second, we should start seeing some data. And there we are. Let me preview. Look at that. We are seeing some cat images. So you might be thinking, okay, how the hell did this work? So back up a second. All right. Firstly, if I go back to my Azure function, actually, if you have a look, if you recall, one of the things I had on line eight, I said return properties, and this was an array of additional fields that I wanted returned with the search because I could make use of them. So one of the things I asked SharePoint to return was the list ID. That is why in Power Apps, when I go into and have a look at the collection, that is why we have list ID right there. Fantastic. If you go and have a look in the cat image register, you will see that actually the title field here is the name of the image. Okay, so we have that uh, name of the image. If you go and have a look in Power Apps in our collection, the actual title field here, it's the very same name, right? Because it's querying that list. So if you go back to my function here, on that image control, what I'm saying is go to the cat image register, go to the title field, and if it matches this item dot title, retrieve me the cat image, right? What is cat image? Cat image is the URL of the actual photo. The system works. So we now have um, some cleverness here. This feed is actually showing a preview when we need to, but of course the layout is a bit sucky, right? We're not seeing things appropriate. So what I'd like to do next is how about let's make this um, this label here uh, change. Uh, and so if there's an image visible, let's realign it so it's to, off to the side of the image and not overlaying the image. So let's do that. That means we're going to have to shift the um, X position and the Y position actually. So let's go to that label. First, we'll do the Y position. No, we'll do the X position, I should say. So the X position is currently zero, and I'm gonna change it to this. If um, image one, image one is the name of the control. I didn't rename these controls. If image one dot visible, so if the image control is visible, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna set the X position to image one, dot x plus image one dot width so the width of the image which basically says take wherever this image is and go for the width and let's just add uh, 15 onto it for good measure okay now otherwise if it's not visible let's just make it zero and straight away if you look down there you can see the change in position but I also want to make it kind of centered I think it's a bit sort of weird sitting up the top there so now let's go to the Y position <coughs> and let's do a similar thing if image one dot visible so if the image is visible then I want the Y position to be um, image one dot Y right um, plus image one dot width, except um, we then need to divide all that by two because I want it to be halfway up. So let's see how this works. Image one dot height dot image one dot width. I'm going to divide that by two, and then I'm going to add 15 to that. And if not, let's leave the height. Oh, the height for this one would have to be in relation to the first label, actually label one. So let's go label one dot y plus label one dot height 
plus 20 for good measure. What have we done? So that now has shown that that is now offset nicely. 20 is a bit much for that one, so let's make that 10. Okay, that's better. Um, and this one has pushed down a little bit uh, too far as well because I didn't need to put a plus 15 on that because I was dealing with the y-axis. Derpol, that's looking a lot better. So let's just preview and have a look and see how that is looking. Okay, so the layout is a little bit better, but you can still see that we can't really separate each feed from each other. It's still a bit on the kind of ugly side, right? So let's now do that. What I'll do here is I'm going to add to the gallery. I'm going to insert a rectangle. Icon, rectangle. Right down the bottom. There's a lot more icons now. Recent update. Okay, here is our rectangle. Have I added it to the right spot? I do believe I... No, I didn't. You can tell because you can see it's not in the right spot there for the gallery. So if I just copy that, control X that, select one of the existing ones, this is another trick you can do. Right, now it's there because you can see it everywhere. I'm now going to grab this and I am going to make it the full width. Okay, to save me messing around manually, I'm going to go to the um, height property and I'm going to set height to 1. Oops, height is not gallery one, height is one. I'm also going to set the color of this property to, um, let's make the fill like a dark gray. This will do. Okay, now at the moment that's not quite smart because that is the separator between, you know, this one, uh, this cell and the next one. I actually need to have this, if this image is there, it has to be based on the position of the image. And if it's, if there's no image there, it has to be based on the position of the label. So how do we do that? Well, let's give it a go. Let's go to the Y property and let's try this. If image one, so if the image is visible, then we want to go, the Y is image one dot Y plus image one dot height. And now we'll add say 15 or 20. Right, if it's invisible, we want to use label two, which is this one here. So we'll go label two dot y plus label two dot height, right, plus 20. Okay, we won't truly see the effect of this until we preview, so let's have a look. And now things are looking nicer. I am starting to like that. Not bad at all. Okay. So, what we've basically done, and I think I'm going to leave it there. You can see that I could add an arrow and you could click on it and it could launch that particular page. Um, but I think this basically covers the whole thing in a nutshell. So, to, I guess, recap where we've been, here's what we did. We took a whole bunch of SharePoint lists and libraries and encapsulated them into a SharePoint search result source. I used the list ID as a parameter, although there are other ways of doing that. I then wrote myself a little PowerShell function. I used PNP PowerShell, the Patterns and Practices PowerShell libraries, which has a built-in command called submit PNP search, uh, submit PNP search query. Um, that query specifies that result source, which means we get all of the correct information we need. I then made a Power Apps custom connector using Postman to actually um, provide the ability for Power Apps on start to be able to call that connector to retrieve this data to provide a feed. And then finally, we spent a little bit of time just showing you the capability of Power Apps in terms of being able to create quite flexible interfaces to display this data in, in interesting ways. So I hope you got some value out of that. Um, I, did, I apologize, it was we covered a lot of territory here, so it'll be interesting to see how long the video ends up uh, taking. But please, if you liked it, please give me any feedback if you can build on it or enhance it in any ways. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but otherwise, uh, wishing you a yeah, relaxing Christmas break and New Year's, and we'll see you in the new year.